doing the surgery itself has a direct impact and I can see the outcome for, for the patient. Most of the time when we do surgery, we take things out, we don't really put things in. When I finished junior college and we had to decide what you know to do when it comes to university applications, so I thought to myself, okay, what do I see myself doing in 30, 40 years time? So there, there were only kind of two choices. One was to be a doctor, the other one was to be a chef. Yeah, because so these were the only two things that when I was 19 years old, I could see myself doing all the way to retirement. I'm a very hands-on person. I like to be out and about. I like to, you know, be in operating theatre. It's the hands-on part as well as the end results that is tangible that I can see. Um, that's what kind of um, directed me or drove me towards surgery. So I, I mean, technology has always been a part of my life. Yeah, I, I like computers, I like new gadgets. I've been building computers by myself since I was in secondary school. Before my exposure to HoloLens to moving holograms, you know, with your hands and moving things around. I mean, those are like minority report, Iron Man kind of stuff. To me, it was technology that I thought it's going to be many, many years down the road, but available now. I use it a lot for um, pre-procedure planning. So for example, complex liver surgeries, uh, sometimes pancreas surgeries as well. And um, I use it to teach medical students as well as residents. Sometimes if, if we have the opportunity to, I use it to educate my patients as well. So the entire you know, operative counselling process is done using the HoloLens itself. Yeah, so before the surgery, um, what we do is that usually we have a team meeting. Um, we will have everyone look through the scans itself. We will plan for the surgery. Yeah, so with the shared experience, we can actually link multiple devices up. And even if, let's say, they are not in the hospital, they are at a remote location, with the shared experience, they can actually still see the holograms of the scans using their HoloLens or even just on um, the image projected to MS Teams. I find the liver to be a very fascinating organ because uh, there's just so many different functions that goes on inside the liver and it's so complex. Most of the time, we don't put a living organ back into someone, um, especially a living organ that actually doesn't belong to that, pa that patient. Right? So the ability to remove something that's not working, putting in something into a patient that is working but doesn't actually belong to them and giving them a second chance in life, I, I think that's something that uh, is quite unique and quite special to transplant surgery. The operating aspect is just part of it. A lot of it has to come down to decision making, being able to recognize um, when things are not going correctly, or even choosing the right donor and the right recipient. Working with engineers is very important because as a clinician, I, I, I know how to, or at least have an idea of how to apply the, the technology for the clinical aspects, how we're going to use it on the ground, how do we intend to implement it, but I wouldn't know how to do the other spectrum, meaning that the computer science, the engineering, the very complex coding and research and, and stuff that goes on. So that's where I need you know, the help of the engineers the software developers, the systems architect, because they are the experts. Sometimes if let's say during the course of our project or during our research, we encounter some difficulties. We are actually quite grateful that Microsoft uh, allows us direct access to the engineering teams. For us, we were looking for a platform that was very flexible. We can use it across a wide variety of use cases. It is not specific for one particular um, procedure or one particular surgery. The VSI Holomedson uh, from Ipoclar was the choice that we made. I, th I think for a, a successful 
translational research program, especially when it comes to med tech and innovation, there definitely has to be a lot of conversation and cooperation between the clinical and the non-clinical uh, you know, members of the team because if we don't work closely together and we don't talk and we don't communicate, there's no way that we're going to have a very good you know, um, project or, or product at the end of it. For the future, it goes beyond just using it in the operating theatre. So even in the clinics, in the wards, for what we call point of care solutions, for example, um, you know, linking up the HoloLens and BSI HoloMedicine to ultrasound devices, to remote patient sensors, um, just building up this entire platform to you know, having a, 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 what we call a unified user interface to integrate all the data and, and information that's coming into the clinician.